Hey guys, it's Joel from guntoter.org. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Franken carrier that you have seen in previous videos when we've been talking about different placards and different pouches. Um, but before we get into that, if you could go down below, hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, hit your notifications, and also go into the video description and check out our Patreon page. Um, everything that we review here, we purchase, and we do that so that you know that we're not getting free stuff and just giving good reviews for free gear we buy it because we think that it'll be interesting to you and uh, so we can give you the most biased free review uh, that we can do um, so if you could help us out monetarily that'd be really awesome and uh, with that said let's go ahead and get into the video okay so you've seen this carrier before um, obviously probably more than once uh, this started out as a straight uh, older generation Ferro Concepts Slickster. Uh, now, I kind of have to caveat here because a lot of the um, kind of reviews I'm going to talk about on this and some of the problems I had uh, that I have remedied with aftermarket accessories are not necessarily a problem with the newer Slickster because uh, they have a lot more accessories that specifically fit the new Slickster that do not fit this older generation. So I need to put that caveat out there up front. Um, so how I originally kind of came about this kit, uh, I had just kind of gotten off active duty. I knew that I wanted a plate carrier um, to have on my own, like for preparedness reasons. Um, obviously Uncle Sam didn't want to let me keep their very expensive one that they had issued me previously. So, uh, you know, kind of spent a little time looking around, saw the Slickster, uh, got a lot of good reviews, people liked it. There was a little bit of kind of celebrity power behind it. It was kind of the thing back when I bought it. Um, it was inexpensive, it was available, and it was quality. So it kind of hit my three basics. Um, so I bought it, and I've been running it ever since. And it's probably been seven, eight years now. Um, but at the same time, when I originally purchased it, I didn't put a lot of thought into kind of like down the road, like, hey, this is super cool, super slick, you know, I can run it underneath stuff, um, but further down the road, what am I gonna want this to do? Uh, and that is why it is kind of morphed into what we're gonna talk about today with some of the aftermarket accessories that I've thrown on there. Um, Nothing against the original Slickster. It's more my fault uh, as far as my analysis goes. So I'm gonna talk you through each of the additions that I've made, why I made those additions, and then hopefully that will kind of provide you with some, some fodder uh, when you are thinking about what kit you wanna get. Um, again, we're gonna to try to do this in a close-up fashion like we did with a previous video. I've tried to learn a few things from that and I'm gonna see if I can do it a little bit better this time. So with that said, let's head to the close-up. Okay guys, so talk a little bit about what the kit was and you know what I what I changed out and why I changed it out. So obviously the Faro, the Slickster, comes with a cummerbund that is just elastic, right? It's got the sewn-in elastic pockets. These pockets are actually useful for a lot of stuff. Um, but there's obviously no way to actually put purpose-built pockets on there, right? Like I can shove a uh, radio in one of the pockets, but if I need a uh, pocket with a little bit more retention or I need like a fold out pocket, for example, like with the bow fangs, I can't attach one. So I needed a different cummerbund. So I actually ended up going with the Bees Combat Systems um, cummerbund with the tubes. As you can see, um, lots of Molly attachment points. Um, and so it meets, kind of checks that box of expanding the, um, the capacity, the carrying capacity of the kit itself over just, you know, the placard up front. Because, again, they're micro placards. There's only so much you can fit in there. If you need to add anything else that won't fit in the placard, it's got to go somewhere. And the cummerbund, you know, is one of the more logical places to put it. Um, I really like uh, the overall design. Um, the tubes are cool for quick on and off. Uh, I know they're, they're really popular with some guys. I personally am probably not going to buy these again. And uh, there's two reasons for that. One, I don't need quick on and off for the vast majority of what I do. And two, as you can see, uh, it's taking up about an inch, inch and a half, even as much as two inches of available real estate. Like I could put something right here, like a pouch 
you know, up front right next to my micro rig, uh, but I can't do that with, uh, with the tubes in the way. So in my case, the ability to put a pouch here actually outweighs my need for the quick on and off. So um, while again, the tubes are a cool invention, especially if you need that quick on and off, I don't need it, so you're probably not gonna see these tubes again uh, on any of my uh, future kits unless my needs change. So um, again, love the cummerbund, uh, love the, the amount of molly it's got. I am actually switching on my next one, which I'll do a video. On my next one, there's actually gonna be, it's gonna be a thinner cummerbund uh, without the tubes. So I will do a video on that eventually, uh, but it's, it's gonna be a ways down the road after I've run, the, run it for a while. Uh, the second thing I added was um, in my old kit that I wore, uh, I had side plates. Obviously there is no way to put side plates on the standard uh, Faro cummerbund. So once I got the Molly, I can now put side plates on, but I needed a pocket. Well, since this was more of an experimental thing, right? So I wanted a way to kind of mess around with positions of the plates and kind of see if you know, if the added bulk and the added weight uh, was worth the level of protection or the coverage, I should say, that I was gonna get. So I bought the training plates. Well, these training plates are about six by eight. Uh, the vast majority of pockets out there, at least the cool guy ones that I found, are six by six. So I ended up with the SKD TAC uh, pig uh, side pockets. Really great design. They'll fit six by six or six by eight. They, uh, they expand to fit. Uh, they are really secure. It's a very simple but really, you know, really well thought out design by SKD Tactical. So I ended up putting those on there on the sides. Now, technically, the way this is designed, I believe it's supposed to mount on the outside of the Molly. Uh, but for for bulk reasons, especially if I wanted to put like another pocket on, over top of this, I actually mounted it on the inside, and I like that it keeps it tighter and a little bit more streamlined on the kit. So that is probably something I will replicate on, uh, on the next kit, uh, hopefully with, uh, with a six by six instead of the six by eight. I'm either gonna cut these plates, these training plates down and, uh, and run those, or I'm just going to go ahead and bite the bullet and uh, buy some actual six by six side plates and run those. Um, and you know, my real plates up front, like for training and stuff. Um, I just really don't like running my real plates for like when I'm doing testing or even if it's just playing airsoft with my son. I really don't like running the real plates because I, I can't afford to buy another set if I break those. So I much prefer running these these test plates. I get the same weight and uh, you know I can still test fit everything and make sure it works. So that's the two that's the two big changes, right? So I added that capability of the Molly in the Cumberbund. I added the capability of the side plates. And then uh, as I was testing the various uh, placards and then also adding all this extra weight on the sides, uh, the straight shoulders kind of started getting a little bit uncomfortable. So I actually switched out and added um, these shoulder blade or these shoulder pads from Raptor Tactical. Uh, I really like the overall design. Um, they, they fit well, good padding, not too crazy, but, but enough that it, that it helps you know kind of lighten that load a little bit. Uh, they do have uh, several different ways that you can attach tubes and wires and whatever. You have these uh, one wrap pieces that stick out here, and then you also have uh, some bungee cord here that you can use as well. Now for me, uh, I am probably actually gonna end up uh, chopping the one wrap off. Uh, I, don't, I don't really use the one wrap. Uh, I know a lot of guys do, a lot of guys like it. It's not really my thing, so it's probably gonna go away and I'm gonna rely on the shock cord or honestly, possibly just running things you know, through the actual shoulder pad itself uh, once I kind of get that established and figure out what wires I'm gonna have to run. So, so those are my three things, right? And yeah, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Like why'd you make a whole video for three little changes? Um, part of it was to actually show the product, right? Because I think that both Bees, or all three, Bees, Raptor, and SKD make great products, so I wanted to kind of showcase those. But realistically, it was to show, you know, for those of you who have seen, especially the old gen, right, which is what this is, the old gen Faro Slickster, taking it from a straight Slickster, you know, as my needs evolved, adding aftermarket accessories, you know, the cummerbund, the plate pouch, 
the uh, the shoulder pads, you know, and just taking it up at that next level uh, for the capabilities that I actually needed. So anyway, those are the big changes, and obviously you've seen uh, the <laughs> the micro rigs come and go, and you'll see more. I've got uh, I've got at least two more that you're going to see videos on. So. Let's go ahead and wrap it up and uh, I'll get you guys on your way. Okay guys, so hopefully that quick talk through kind of illustrated how you can grow a kit from a real basic plate carrier into a more capable uh, piece of equipment using a thorough analysis of your needs. Um, actually the only reason that I'm switching out to another plate carrier is that this old gen uh, does not allow me uh, to do two main things. One of those is this old gen does not have a way to mount uh, a phone or a chest computer um, up top here. Uh, the newer Ferris Slicksters actually do have a way to do that, but the, the adapter piece that they have does not uh, work with the old one. So I can't mount the, the chest piece and some of the stuff I want to experiment with is going to involve you know having that, that phone out and available and trying to link it with various pieces of equipment and, and trying out various apps and such. So I need that. Uh, the other thing is there's no uh, molly on the back. And again, one of the things I want to test is antenna relocation. Uh, so there's a limit obviously with this piece of kit as to how far I can modify it before I do have to get rid of it and just go to a whole new kit. Um, but, but that's something to keep in mind, right? If you have a plate carrier that, you know, the front and back bags are good and there's just little stuff you want to tweak, my advice would be to kind of take it a piece at a time, tweak it as you need it, instead of being like, hey, this plate carrier doesn't work for me, get rid of it and buy a whole new plate carrier because, I mean, I know these things are expensive. I know not everybody has the money to drop on, you know, hey, I think I'm gonna try a cry right now. So just, just buy this, this, this cry carrier. Um, so, you know, analyze your needs, look for individual pieces that will be compatible with your kit and, and kind of do a piecemeal approach. Like there's no shame in a Franken carrier if it does what you need it to do, right? We're not necessarily here for the Gucci. I know rule number one is look cool. I get it, but I'd rather be capable than look cool. Don't tell anyone I said that, but it holds true. So hopefully this was useful for you. Um, if it was, you know, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, if it wasn't, also leave a comment. Um, I get down votes all the time. I don't have a problem with down votes, but I'd really appreciate it if you went down in the comments and actually told me why you downvoted, right? Like, was the info bad? Uh, do you just not share my opinion? Is there something technically wrong with the video I need to fix? I want to learn, and that's the stuff I need to know to actually learn. Uh, we may vary on opinions, and we may not come to an agreement on opinions, but I'd at, least, I'd at like least to hear yours, and you know, the other uh, watchers would too, uh, because you need that free exchange of ideas. So go ahead and, and leave a comment. Uh, I do read them, I do get back to them. And uh, again, if you can, Patreon page, if you could help us out, uh, buy this gear, because I really love making these videos, I really, really love testing the gear, um, but I don't necessarily really love the bills that come along with it. So if you could help us out, that would be awesome. It'd keep this channel running. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all of you because this channel is nothing without the people who actually watch it. And I hope to see you again on the next video.